second panel, be seated, Mr. Banner, Master P. begin by welcoming our second panel. Uh, let me also thank you for your patience. Uh, you didn't have to be here. You were not, were not subpoenaed. You've come voluntarily. And we certainly appreciate that. You're here because you are concerned about the issues that are under consideration uh, this uh, morning and afternoon in this subcommittee. You're here because you want to do, quote unquote, the right thing and have done, quote unquote, the right thing. Again, I want to thank you so much for your, your generous use of your time. You have uh, been very, very patient to, this, uh, to the members of this subcommittee. Let me begin by welcoming our first witness, Mr. Lavelle Crump, also known as David Banner a hip-hop artist. David Barron, who is uh, the Republican witness uh, on this panel, is a prominent rapper whose biggest hits were Like a Pimp and Play. He will offer his insights as a hip-hop artist whose lyrics and videos are controversial. Our second witness is Mr. Percy Miller, also known as Master P founder and CEO of No Limit Records. Master P is a hip-hop icon as a rapper, producer, and label executive. While he was famous for promoting quote-unquote gangster rap and the quote-unquote bounce hip-hop of the quote-unquote Dirty South, he is currently engaged in forming a record label that promotes positive hip-hop messages. And lastly, our witness on the second panel is Mr. Michael Eric Dyson, PhD, who's a professor at Georgetown University. My friend Michael Eric Dyson is the author of uh, Know What I Am, Reflections on Hip Hop, and the other book is Bill Cosby Right, or Has the Black Middle Class Lost it my, Its Mind? Professor Dyson teaches theology, English, and African American studies, and is one of the America's premier academic scholars on hip hop. Again, welcome you, and we will open up now with uh, five minutes of testimony from Mr. Uh, David Banner. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Stearns, and members of the committee. My name is David Banner. I'm an artist for Universal Recordings, a producer, and a labeled executive. Thank you for inviting my testimony. This dialogue was sparked by the insulting comments made by Don Imus concerning the Rutgers women's basketball team. Imus lost his job, but later secured a million dollar contract with another station. While, he, <clears throat> while it seems that he's been rewarded, the hip hop industry is left under public scrutiny. As this dialogue played out in the media, the voices of the people who created hip-hop music were silent. We were, not we, we were not invited to participate on most of the panels, 
nor given the opportunity to publicly refute any of the accusations hurled at us. It is of the utmost importance that the people whose livelihood is at stake be made a vital part of this process. That's why I thank you guys today. I'm from Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson is one of the most violent cities in the United States. Much like D.C., Jackson stays in the murder capital run. When I was growing up, it was always ranked as one of the top ten cities for the highest number of murders per capita. Honestly, rap music is what kept me out of trouble. Statistics will never show the positive side of rap because statistics don't reflect what you don't do if you don't commit a murder or a crime. When I would feel angry I would, and, and, would, and would want to get revenge, I would listen to Tupac. His anger in the song would replace my anger and I would live vicariously through his music. Rap music is the voice of the underbelly of America. And in most cases, America wants to hide the negative that it does to its people. Hip hop is that voice. And how dare America even consider not giving us the opportunity to be heard? I'm one of the few artists who went to college. And to this day, I see my friends who also attended college with me and graduated, unable to get jobs. The truth is, what we do sells. And oftentimes, artists do try to do different types of music, and it doesn't sell. In America, the media only lifts up negativity. People consider me to be a philanthropist. I give away a quarter of my yearly earnings to send children from impoverished neighborhoods to different cities. Disneyland. This gives them another vision. Rap music has changed my life and all of those around me. It has given me the opportunity to eat. I remember sending 88 kids from the inner city on a trip. I went to the local newspaper and the television stations only to be told that the trip was not newsworthy. But if I shot somebody, it would be all over the news. <laughs> I threw the largest, listen to me, I threw the largest urban relief concert in history for Katrina that never made the front cover of a magazine. But as soon as I say something negative and rise up against my own or be sharp at the mouth, no pun intended. <laughs> I'm perceived as being disrespectful to my black leader. The negativity always overshadows all the positive things that we do as rap artists. Some might argue that the content of our music serves as poison to the mind of our generation. If by some stroke of the pen, hip-hop was silent, the issues would still be present in our community. Drugs, violence, sexism, and the criminal element were here long before hip-hop. The Crips, the Bloods, the Vice Lords, and the Gangsters were here before rap music. Gang violence was here before rap music. Our consumers come from a various socioeconomic background and culture. While many underprivileged, a large percentage of, it are, a percentage of those people are educated professionals. The responsibility for their choices does not rest on the shoulders of hip-hop. Still, others raise, uh, may raise the concerns that the youth having access to our music. Much like the ratings utilized by motion picture associations, our music is given a rating, which is displayed on the package. This serves to inform the public of the possible adult content. As such, the probability of shocking the unsuspected consumer's sensibility is virtually impossible. If the consumer is disinterested or offended by the content of our music, don't buy the CD. Cut the radio off. Some may argue the verbiage of used in our music is derogatory. During slavery, those in authority used the word nigger as a means to, de to degrade or emasculate. There was no push for censorship then. <laughs> the abuse accompanied by the label nigger was forced and internalized. We had to internalize it. This made the situation easier to digest. Our generation has since assumed ownership of the word. And now that we capitalize it off the word, now they want to censor it? <laughs> That's amazing to me. <laughs> wow. The same respect is not often given or extended to hip-hop artists as those in other areas. Stephen King and Steven Spielberg are renowned for horrific creation. These movies are embraced as art. Why then is our content not merely deemed horror music? Mark Twain's literary classic, Huckleberry Finn, is still required reading in our classrooms across the United States. The word nigger appears approximately 215 times. While some may find this offensive, 
the book was not banned by all districts because of its artistic value. The same consideration is not given to hip-hop music. As consumers, we generally gravitate to and have a, holi a higher tolerance for things that we can relate to. As such, it is not surprising that the spirit of hip-hop is not easily understood. In 1971, the case of Cohen versus California, Justice Harlan noted that one man's vulgarity is another man's lyric. Our troops are currently at war under the guise of liberating our other countries, while here in America, our rights are being threatened daily. This is illustrated by homeland security, extensive phone tapping, and ill placement or ill placement censorship. If we are not careful, we'll find ourselves getting closer to a dictatorship. And in closing, traditionally, multi-billion dollar industries have thrived on the premise of violence, sexuality, and derogatory content. This capitalistic trend was not created nor introduced by hip hop. It has been here. It is the American way. And I can admit that there are some problems in hip hop, but it's only a reflection of what's taking place in our society. Mr. Crump, would you please bring your... You know, oh yeah, this is the last sentence. Okay, last sentence. Can, can I go back, because this is very powerful. I can admit that there are some problems in hip hop, but it's only a reflection of what's taking place in our society. Hip hop is sick because America is sick.